Hi everyone, my name is Karen Toole. I'm the New York Bureau Chief of Bloomberg um, here in this lovely city. Um, the New York Bureau is the largest of our 150 bureaus in 72 countries. Um, I think it's really interesting uh, that Bloomberg would have a woman like me being the Bureau Chief of our, of our biggest bureau. Um, also a little plug for Bloomberg, um, we really do pride ourselves on promoting women. Um, in the stories that we cover and indeed in our newsroom. About half of the women, uh, half of the people at Bloomberg News around the world actually report into a woman. So we are quite a, an interesting company to work for. And, and this is the third year that we've been involved in this conference. And many thanks to Susan and to Randy and to the entire team for asking us back again for I think it's going to be an, a fantastic panel with four really, really wonderful women. Um, I'm going to introduce everyone. The first is Marcel Marcella Dreimer, uh, the CFO of, of Oderbrecht, uh, which is a Brazil, Brazilian civil construction, urban development, and engineering firm. Her prior experience included service, serving as a CFO and vice president of investor relations at another company. And we also have Andreo Grobo Capital. Um, a little confession on my part, I'm also, on top of being the New York Bureau Chief, I'm also slightly dyslexic, which is interesting when we talk about overcoming things. I have, a di I have difficulty reading out loud, so bear with me. She's the Vice President, true, it's interesting, uh, Vice President of Grupo Los Grupo, which is an agro-industrial firm that she founded with her father and brother when she was 21. And she's also the founder of Floor, which is her foundation for responsible leadership, and we're going to certainly talk about that. Next to me is Marina Elena Logomasino who is the Chief Executive Officer and Managing Partner at WE Family Offices, and she's a board member of the American Society. She is a seasoned wealth management and banking professional who, in her spare time, worked with then-President George Bush the Younger mm -hmm. to, secure, to secure private funds to aid disaster victims in Central America. And last, and no means by least, is Cristina Pineda, the founder of Pineda Co Covalin, a Mexican art and textile company. And she also has an amazing philanthropy devoted to assisting marginalized people in Latin America. So please join me very quickly a round of applause to everyone. Welcome, God. So my first question is for Marcella. Um, you work in finance, right? And you also work in a company that's engaged in civil construction and urban development and engineering, all profoundly male. Um, how do you navigate that world as a woman? It, or is, is being a woman a factor? Yeah, just a little bit explanation regarding the development of my career. Uh, I started and I developed my whole career in a petrochemical business company, so it was an industrial company, mm -hmm. but was controlled by uh, this group that the origin of the group was engineering construction. So of course that was uh, a male environment, not really a lot of women around. And um, it, it's hard to say if it was something different or not, probably there were a lot of things different because I was uh, a woman. Uh, but it was very clear for me that things took longer than it was for my old peers and colleagues that started working at the same time. So uh, it took longer to take new positions because it seems to me that the, the other partners and other, also the shareholders they wanted to get more confident in order to give me you know, challenges. So this was the big difference that, that I, I could face. And uh, of course, that you know, sometimes I felt that I was ready to assume new challenges and so on, and I was not the one choosing. And uh, at that time, I was you know, keeping saying to myself, OK, you have other things to do. You know? And I was always doing other things that I think is extremely important for a woman, which is you know, be a mother, you know, have your own marriage, enjoy your personal life, not only work. And, uh, and meanwhile, I think uh, when I was concentrating my personal life and my personal things, and uh, to use my free time that now is the only th the thing that I miss more is to have you know available time to do other things. I, I keep you know developing and being prepared. And then finally, I think that I was very sure about this that once I, I will be prepared, I think that the opportunity will come sooner or later. And then I became the CFO of Braskin, mm -hmm. which is this petrochemical company. And I think for me, it was difficult, not only because I was women, I was a woman, but because I was the first CFO as a woman. So it was a double challenge. And, uh, but I mean, 
I think, and I concentrate everything much more in the work, in the liver, I'm very focused on that, and uh, I think if you're recognized <laughs> for the work that you do, people will respect you, and, uh, and more than that, more than respect, they will want you to share, you know, the challenges and, and, and the things with you. And, and I think this was a little bit of my story. Well, so to pick up on that, um, Marcella talked about having to perhaps being a little patient, maybe promotions or opportunities not coming as quickly as they might have for their peers. Has, have you had experience with that? And how do you deal with frustration, disappointment? How do you keep going and doing your best work? Um, I, I actually always got kind of surprised at the next opportunity that got put in front of me because I wasn't done yet. I never worried about, you know, people would say, what's your five-year plan? And I would be like, I'm too busy trying to do what I'm trying to do, and then the opportunity, you know, would arrive. The only time that that happened to me was when I was running the Latin American private bank at, at Chase. And the president, the then president of the bank, um, who's a fellow by the name of Art Ryan, who was one of my, one of my mentors, uh, called me because the, they had decided that they didn't want uh, some, the person that was running the U.S. business. So, and Latin America was climbing like a bullet, hugely successful, and the U.S. business was eh, not doing very well. And I could see from next door that there were lots of things that could be done to make the business better. So he called me and he said, hey Mel, I want to make you an offer. Would you like to take over the U.S. business? Always thinking that the U.S. business, this is a very American thing, is more sophisticated mm -hmm. than the Latin American business. So I said, and keep Latin America? And he said, no, no, you'd have to give up Latin America. And I said, no, thanks. And he said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, no, thanks. And he said, I'm going to ask you again, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I'm sure, because you'll be back. <laughs> and in a year, he was back. And then I got the US, and then I got the whole private bank. And so I, I think that you, you, know, you just have to be confident. And I think if you're doing a good job, it happens. I can't tell you that I was disappointed. I wasn't disappointed in myself. I was sort of disappointed in him that he had sort of put me in a situation where my success had to do with the fact that I was Latin American. Um, and, um, and so when he, when he actually asked me for the U.S., I thought that was a good thing. When he thought I couldn't do both things, I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. But then I, I did know that he would be back. You shared a little bit before we started talking about how your family came to this country and why you ended up in wealth management. Can you talk about that journey from where you started to where you are now? Oh my God, that's a very long story, but I'm going to try to make the a short very version. short, short version. My, my family were from Cuba. We came to this country in 1960. Uh, and we left everything behind, had a very hard time, as you, as you can imagine, in many different ways. It's not just about financial assets, it's about a whole lifestyle, family, et cetera. Anyway, to make a very long story short, my first job in banking was at Citibank in 1977, and I had the opportunity to work with Chilean clients. And on my first trip to Santiago, when I met these families that had just gone through the whole Allende thing and who looked at me and said, the reason we want to work, we're working with an American bank is because we don't want to go through what your families, what the Cubans went through. I said to myself, this is my mission. My mission in my career is to make sure that these families never have to go through what my family went through. And frankly, that sense of purpose is what gave me the energy, the enthusiasm, you know, sort of that, that extra turbocharged, you know, sense of purpose in my whole career to this day. Now, Andrea, you started your company with, when you were just 21 with your father and brother. Um, on the purpose front, what were you trying to achieve? Did you, did you have a, a, a longer term goal? Were, were you, were you just wanting to be the head of your own company, or, or what was it? Why, why, why did you choose that path? Um, first of nothing, I, I want to uh, ask you sorry, because I have some notes, <laughs> because I speak, I speak gaucho English. Gaucho is a cowboy, 
<laughs> so um, some, something I will read, if I begin to be very hot or very, I change my Spanish, okay? okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I began to work at the same way as men, when I, when I as men did. As a co consequence, I never realized that being a, a young or a woman could be an issue. My involvement, involvement from the very beginning was the key to ensure the role of women and young in the, com in the company. So we had to work to solve two preju prejudices. The first one at company level, because it was traditionally considered by um, a, a male managed business, business. And the second one at the family level, because as all the person talk about, my father was very glad when my, my brother was born. He was a boy. But when I was born, he was very, very worried about, what, about if women could manage the, the company and the farm. And, and then we, I have two girls more, so imagine my father. But <laughs> <laughs> so when I, when I hear all the, the other person, I, I imagine that educate is very important. Our par how our parents educate us and how we educate our children. So, it, we in influence very, very much in, in the family. So it's very important to educate our children and think how we, we, was, we were educated. When my eldest girl went to Buenos Aires to study, because I live in a small town three hours from Buenos Aires, when she, and we, we don't have university, so when she went to study to Buenos Aires, I began to to participate some, in some social, women's social events. And there was the first time that I realized that women in, com in companies was an issue or, or has a, any problem, no? So I, I never, when I was young, so mm -hmm. I began to think in this five years ago, or no more than five years ago. Wow. So, Christina, you, um, yes. We were talking about just thinking about how one starts off in their in their careers, having a vision, having a sense of purpose. Money is part of that. How do you find um, funding to start up a business? How do you how do you find the um, the courage to go to backers and say fund, believe in me, fund me? How how did that work for you? Well, uh, when I started my company, it was. I have 22 years old, mm -hmm. so for me, everything, it's like a dream. I'm a, a very dreaming people all the time. I think that we could do many things for help. We could do creation all the time. And it was very interesting because someone asked me to do a collection for the museums in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And when I arrived with, with my work, I showed the, the designs and he told me, oh, it's beautiful, but we don't have money to produce that. And I say, okay, but we, we could find someone who paid that uh, first inversion. And he told me, okay, let's go in to see how can we, can we produce the first uh, limited edition. And when I, I arrived to my home, my parents told me, ah, don't worry, it's, it's very easy. We, we could help you because it takes only 200 pieces. I mean, in that moment, it's not, not a, it was not expensive. Mm -hmm. So I arrived and I say, okay, I, I will try. Uh, and I ask, and I uh, took, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Toqué muchas puertas. Knocked on doors knocked on many doors. <laughs> and I say, oh, this is my collection, it's beautiful. And everybody says, oh, okay, let me 20 pieces. And I just start to selling a lot, but knocking many, many doors. And now we are very happy because we have uh, many opportunities to bring to, to other uh, young uh, women's and women's and, and and young to start a company. And now we are 120 shops on distribution. And it's like a, like a dream, but of course, knocking many doors. Mm -hmm. so That's it. 
have a question about mentoring. We, we, we're hearing the other speakers talk about mentoring and, and finding mentors and having people to kind of help you in your career. Um, and I believe the woman from the FT talked about you know, the difficulty finding women mentors, um, which often just don't exist. So can you, can you, do you have, have you had mentors in your career? Have they been women? Have they been men? Have you, have you actively gone out to seek someone to help you help guide your career? Wow, and two, two things. And in my family, I think the first mentor that I had was my mother because she was very clear for me that uh, she stopped working. She, was, she used to be a ballet teacher and she quit working to take care of the children and she was completely dependent of my father. And I was raised by, you know, this speaking, you know, you cannot depend on man. You have to be independent. <laughs> And uh, this was really, you know, a mantra. And uh, it was even difficult for me when I, I decided to get married. I was really confused about that. <laughs> oh, should I get married? So should I? And yeah. uh, I think it took a while for me to decide that was, you know, more than welcome to, to get married and, uh, and have children and so on. But then I think the first one, uh, I mean, she was she. And of course, my father, with the example, he was a business guy. All the other part of my family, they, are, they work in art. So one is a musician, the other one is a ballerina, and, and, and that. So, uh, but then I started working in a company, like a um, very similar career that my father has done. My, my father was an engineer, was really focused in finance. And uh, the company that I work for, and I have been working for the same group for the last 20 years. Uh, I start my career there and it's up to now in different companies. So it's a conglomerate that has 12 different companies in 12 different sectors. And, but it has a very, very strong philosophy. And one of the philosophy uh, is that each person, each lead, has as a main role to form another leader to replace him. So in, so in each phase of my career, I had different leaders get, that could help me in different phases of my career. I think, you know, to be ready for the next phase and then to the next phase. Uh, and so in this sense, I, I think I have many mentors, all men. I didn't have mm -hmm. any, uh, any woman as a mentor, not so far. I would love to have. And, but for me, again, you know, it never mattered the fact that it was a man or was a woman. Because for me, it, like all the others said, I didn't care about the fact that I was a woman. I was working and uh, that was my, my main focus. Uh, I think I have, you know, different uh, mentors that helped me in the beginning uh, to, to deliver, very focused in deliver, and, and later on, but it's still in the beginning of my career, me, teach me how to take decisions, and I learned that it's one of the, the most important skills that we can have, uh, you know, you know, be trained to take, you know, decisions since the beginning, to take risk, to accept risk or not, or to minimize the risk. Uh, through your actions. So, uh, and I, I truly believe that since they delegated you a lot of things to do, uh, and this is part of our culture, culture as well, you will start to learn to take decisions, you know, since the beginning. And, and, fin and finally, there is always someone that could think ahead of me, that could see things that was not clear for me, that I couldn't see, and could inspire me to the next phase. So. Uh, I think it was, you know, a little bit like that, mm -hmm. that uh, I reached this point with the help with the, you know, many, many leaders, all men, but I think that all of them would like me to help to be a better professional year after year. And, and I, I think I still have a very good relationship with all of them. Now you have a foundation okay. that's focused on, on helping women. Can you talk a little bit about what what you've, why you started it, and perhaps also what you've learned while you've been working with these women. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I divided my life in three stages. The first one was for learning and training. Uh, when I was 17 years old, I had to move to Buenos Aires because uh, my town, there were not universities. The second, the second stage was when I returned to my house um, for creating not only a company and also a family. And it wasn't easy at the beginning because we, we work a lot because we have a small company, company. And when I was 25 years old, my first girl was born with the spina bifida. Mm -hmm. And the last pregnancy also surprised me because there were twins, so I have four children. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, 
when, when she talk about the, ma the, the mom, I think, um, my mother say always, it's not, it's not good if you work so, so, such a lot of time because you have four children. She, she was not very good for me because I, I was very fresh, pre fresh pressured. Because her, because she said, you must stay more in your house. You have a husband, you have four children. And it was a very difficult. But I, I, I think as, as same as her, I have three boys who helped me push. No, I am not sure if they mentor, but I remember they, um, they push in different way. Uh, for example, my father and my brother, they always remarking uh, what I don't do very well. How do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Always remarking. So they, they I, I understand they are my mentor. And my husband, no. <laughs> my husband always emphasized you could, go, you could go, you could help. So because this, I think it's very important to choose a very good partner, a very good couple in the, one, in the, in the life. So he, I, I understand they, they were all very good for me, but it's very important to choose very well the person who stay in your life. And um, I, I was talking about the second stage, and when, when I, I build, when I create my family and my company. And now is my third stage. And this, in this stage, I founded my, my foundation, who tried to mentor ch girls, mentor women, and I write a book named Passion por Hacer, Passion to Do, in which I, um, I go uh, over the different roles in my 50, I have 50 years old. And, and, and all the roles about women, woman, daughter, granddaughter, friend, sister, wife, manager, mother, member of the board, owner, president, writer, and woman mentor among others. So I talk about these different roles in the life, in the book. And I, I try to, th that the book royalties founded my foundation. Then I realized that it's not too much, but, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Um, and the foundation has a lot of um, interesting. One is family business. The other is uh, responsible leadership. But when I sit my board of the foundation, they say, which is your focus, focus? And I say, okay, women in a places of decision. So I have this October began the first program from women in, women in board, mm -hmm. women on board in Argentina. And, and the other is important for me, incorporate disability person in com companies. So the two things that I will be doing with my foundation is one is prepare more women to be on board or be in, in places of decision. Um, and the second is to incorporate more disabilities person in the labor market. So when I I understand that this my foundation is a way to thank thank thanking mm -hmm. all the my learning and share with another all the learning and experiences that I having my 50 years old, next 50 maybe, <laughs> sharing with others. So many thank you for inviting me, uh, Susan and the team, because this is what I, I like to do. Yeah. This is my, my, my foundation and what I, I want to do in my third stage of my life. <laughs> You talked about passion when we were chatting before, so we're hearing a lot about that. Ha, has your passion always been the same, or, or have you changed over the years? You had life stages really cleared out. Uh, are there, are there, were there certain, uh, I, wanna say, I wanna say emotional goals, but were there certain things that you really wanted to achieve, and then once that was done, you moved on to, to a new thing? I or think was it just flowing into each other? I think it just sort of happens organically. Mm -hmm. As, as you're, so you're 50, I'm 65, <laughs> okay? Um, and, and I think that, that every, you know, you just sort of evolve organically as long as you feel that you have a sense of purpose and that you can help make the world a better place in whatever you're good at, that just keeps evolving because you just keep moving from one step to another. Um, 
you know, in the, in the little video they had asked me about uh, mentor and I had mentioned David Rockefeller, so he's 99. And, and when I was at, at Chase, I had the opportunity to travel with him a lot. And he was in his mid 80s and, and his 90s and everywhere he went, he added value and made something happy, learned someone happy, learned something new, um, enjoyed something, whether it was a margarita or you know a chilaquile at the, at the Mexican market, or it was a cup of tea in, in China, you know. And so, sort of this 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 passion. The passion has to be about life, about learning, about growing every day. And I think that the older you get, it's more and more natural that you want to give back because you've been given so much and we're so successful you know, in our lives that it's just sort of natural that that passion evolves more, not about what you're getting, but what you're giving. Now, I have a question for you about um, brand. So your company is literally a brand. You make things that are tangible. One of the things I'm really interested in personally is the notion of personal brand. How do we tell our story? Who are we? How do we present ourselves? And, and not just physically, just what is, our, what is our brand? Who are we? What is your brand? Do you have any thoughts about when you get up in the morning, you go out to face the world, whether there are opportunities or challenges, what does your brand stand for? And, and, and how can younger people who are just starting out or in mid-career mm -hmm. kind of find that, that compass? Well, very difficult. <laughs> No, I, I think um, all the day, all all the days, it's a big challenge. When, when you have many people who depends on you, sometimes you say, no, 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 I don't know how ca can I? I'm, I'm going to pay all the the rents, the the, the, the the compromise that you that you assume. So um, it's interesting because if you believe in something. You trust in you, and and it doesn't matter. Now we we just open a, a, a store here, a store yes, mm -hmm. it was in yeah. magazine no, mm -hmm. a store here in New York, and it's amazing because here in New York, there are many people, there are many competition in everything. You you see many brands, and 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 you say it doesn't matter. I, I think it's a big challenge. So. And it works if you if you think positive all the time, you are convinced in that you could do it. I think that. Well, I think we're going to open up to some questions. Um, does anyone have a question? And if, when you do ask a question, if you could stand mm -hmm. and perhaps say where you're from. We have no. There's there's one brave there's what one brave hand. Interesantes, que su liderazgo es una mentoría y vuelvo a decir aunque no tenga nombre y apellido, eso es muy importante. Reconozco a todas las presentes, pero especialmente a mi paisana Cristina Pineda que además trae el tema cultural por el mundo, que es un ejemplo, discúlpenme que me dirija, que es a la que, conozca, eh, que, a la que conozco, y este, Cristina, yo te felicito mucho, porque no solamente las que nos dedicamos a la política, tú que eres un artista, has podido trascender. Muchas felicidades a todas. Do you need translation? No, we got no. it. No. Okay. Yes? <laughs> she says that everybody who is on the stage is a leader and a mentor. And she was particularly, uh, she recognized Cristina because you are the cultural ambassador of Mexico and a great example to everybody in Mexico for your cultural leadership. Creo que lo hice bien. Si no, no pasó nada. A ver, next question. Please identify yourself. Hi, I'm Lourdes Zapata from NYU Stern, and muchas gracias por estar aquí hoy día. 
I wanted to ask if you can share any tangible to-dos that we can bring to our businesses and schools to empower women. Is that starting a mentoring program? What do you suggest? Thank you. Um, ¿Qué pregunto? ¿Qué, qué, qué, puede, qué, pueden, ¿Qué consejo le podemos dar a ellas de lo que pueden hacer para tratar de empower, o sea, empoderar mujeres? I, I, can, I can give you my own personal piece is, is, uh, that I, I think is very important, particularly to start early with women, is become financially literate, ladies, okay? Take control of your financial lives and your money. So I work with very wealthy families, have been doing it for over 35 years. It is amazing to me, and by the way, I've done research on the subject, how many of us women who are, fi who are financially, you know, who have financial assets are willing to abdicate our responsibility and give it to the men in our lives, whether it's the father, the husband, the son, the brother, whatever. And so what happens is that if they are really good at what they do, um, you're okay. But if they're not there, if there's a death, a divorce, or whatever, you're up the creek, okay? And, um, and so I do think that the best thing we could do as early as possible, and I start with women from their teens, is having them feel completely comfortable with financial terms, with investment terms, with budgeting, take control over your money. And anything that you can do to help women feel comfortable with their own finances and feel comfortable with your own finances will be a great empowering thing. And I, oh, I, I would also add, understand the, the, the financial structure um, and goals of the industry that you're interested in working right. in. Um, that's, that's another part of your family. Um, really understand how that business works um, so that when you go out and you're interviewing or when decisions are being made or when you're pitching your ideas yeah. that you can actually think about why would it be in the best interest for the company how is it going to be funded um, and so you can really present yourself from a from a real point of of power so it isn't just i think we should do this I think we should do this because it's going to satisfy market Y and we're going to pay for it through Z. And you can give them a whole package um, that, that people can actually digest and, and, and not just be the person who dreams up you know, nice ideas. I, I have some, some things to, for you. One is I say have, know exactly what you choose, not only um, partner, husband, also a trustworthy person to help you on our, our houses and offices. Without these people, it's impossible to do a lot of things, no? The other is to have a create goal in mind. I have one about my personal and, and, and professional project. So if you think you want a family, I, I could manage with everything because I, I was only 25 years old. I believe that I could manage uh, family and, and business because I had the energy. It's not the same energy when you have 30 or when you have 40 or when you have 50. So if you want to be mother or have a family, try to think early. Don't wait um, 40 or too much, okay? <laughs> this is the, the second that I won't say. I have another um, prepared team to be able to delegate them, to be happy, be because then you could choose what to do, what you do. So prepare people to uh, delegate. Um, the other that I learned is that we could do more than one thing um, at the same time, but know that it will not be perfect everything. So you could do a lot of things together, but it, no, don't think everything will be perfect. Um, the other is, um, I, I remember a very, very enjoyable, is, uh, or very fun. I remember walking with my English teacher because I did sports and practice languages. In, and try to do two things because the life is very short, so you need to do a lot of things. And, the other, I, I believe, 
you, you hear here about um, communicate our skills and abilities. Don't try to imitate men. You say a, a lot about this. Um, identify priorities is crucial too. So these are some tips that I learn or I, I don't do everything perfect, but I try to, to organize uh, some tips for you. Hi, uh, I'm Marlene Gámez. I'm from uh, Stern. Um, I guess my question is, I was recently reading this article in The Economist that gave you sort of like a profile on leadership. And it basically told you it's um, wild males over six feet, feet tall that speak up, that stand a certain way, uh, and that adopt certain mannerism. And then um, from what I've seen, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've been uh, reading books about uh, female leadership and all of that. There are a lot of conflicting messages on what works and what doesn't, and I know that everything is individual based. But for somebody who is just starting up, and I am, <laughs> I was wondering if you have any sort of uh, any advice. Um, I want to be assertive, but I also don't want to rob people off in the wrong <laughs> side. Uh, I want to show that I, um, you know, that I, I have the knowledge without. Uh, over self-promoting myself. And it's always this like, very difficult ba ba uh, to manage expectations, I guess, when you are starting out um, and, and you want to prove yourself, but at the same time um, remain like, you know, a person that people want to talk to. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I wanted to give you, I mean, at least one of my, uh, my, my examples and, and my story. And I think in this relationship, one very important thing is for you to focus when you are negotiating with everyone in what is right, not who is right. You know, fight for who is right is something that you see very, very common in a business environmental. And everybody wants to have, you know, to be recognized to be the right, to have the right answer, to write the right point. So if you, if you in this sense, I mean, uh, it's not a matter to show that you know or that you show that you, you know more than the other you know, person or to get this leadership as a consequence of your knowledge, but really focus to do what's right. Because if you do what is right, you're going to get there, you know, and you're going to be respected for what is right. It's very clear and it's very common when you are in a meeting room negotiating something that, uh, you know, somehow I start, you know, a lot of, especially men, talking about what is, you know, who is right and what is the right answer and this and that, and then we lose the focus. So if you can be the person that can bring the focus back and say, okay, we are losing time here. Don't forget about who is right. Let's talk what is going on. I think you can very recognize you know, in the future for your leadership. Uh, I think what everybody says here is, is so important also about <coughs> your responsibility to form someone and give back your knowledge. Uh, this is another thing that if you start to help, you know, your colleagues, your team, you know, to be better, is another a good thing about leadership that could add value in your career too, because you will be recognized as a person that can help, that can build, that can construct, not really a person that wants only a position or, you know, to be ahead of the, the other ones would be another important thing that uh, is really, really nice. In my career, when I, I look back, and I see so many colleagues that I had part of my team, and I see them, you know, perform so well. You know, it, it's so nice, you know, that somehow, even if it was very little, you know, I could help them to, to read them. So I, I think this is, would be two things that I would highlight. I, I, would give you, I would make a differentiation between what is, what being a leader is about and the leaders that I have seen, and I have seen children that are leaders, and I have seen 90-year-olds that are leaders. And I think being authentic, true to yourself, and having the courage of your convictions is what leadership is about. That, that's sort of the, the first part. The other stuff is noise. But I do think that you make a very important quest, very important comment, which is when you are in a situation with other people, and you are going to make a stand because you're being true to yourself, you're having courage, you're being authentic, how you say it so that it's heard, okay, 
and accepted is very important. And that's where the books, I think, can help a little bit. Books can't help you be yourself. Books can't tell you have courage, okay? But I think books can sort of help you uh, think about, well, if I'm gonna say something, and this is like really difficult, okay? Sometimes, you know, in a business meeting or whatever, and you're telling somebody their idea really stinks, <laughs> right? And, and you need to tell them their idea stinks. But how do you tell them? It's like telling them their child is ugly, okay? <laughs> so how do you tell them? Because you don't want the business to make a decision based on this bad idea. But the how you tell them, that's the important piece. So I think that distinguish between leadership, which I think is something that you, know, you, you are because of who you are, versus how you deal with some of these issues so that the people that are hearing you can actually understand, hear what you're saying instead of shutting down. What do you yes. think, Cristina? I think the most important is <coughs> believing that you want, and the most important, uh, follow your intuition. All the women have a very good intuition. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has to. It's important to believe in that intuition. Sometimes we, we, we can, we won't, we doesn't want to hear it, but it's, it's an angel, you know, it's, it's like, it's very easy. Bueno. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> what, another question? Okay, right here. Sorry. And then all the way in the back. Hi, my name's Alini Murta. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. I know everybody really appreciates it. Um, I feel like the topic of mentorship keeps coming up, and um, I've spoken to some of the women here today, and it seems like a few of us have been brought up in an environment that unfortunately we didn't have access to mentors. Um, you know, we come from families that maybe weren't uh, educated or, you know, weren't able to achieve a certain level, and, you know, even the other people around us. So my question is, how do you think, or how do you suggest um, women who are just starting out their careers or mid-career reach out to women who are more senior um, to try to establish this type of relationship? I know it can be very intimidating when you know you don't know the person and you're trying to build that relationship. And um, so, I just wanted to see if you had any advice for us. As a pa as a moderator, am I allowed to answer questions too? <laughs> So um, I think that I've never had a mentor. I mean, I've had it, my mother was, a, was an executive, so and, and I came from a family where women were very valued and, and were frankly more of the workers and the men were more of the creative dreamer types. Um, <laughs> I think that you may not be able to find one mentor and you find people who can help you in different ways. And so if you're having a difficulty, uh, I, not only did I confess to being dyslexic, but I'm also naturally a very introverted person. And so if when I was 30, if you said, you're going to be on a stage talking in front of people, I, I would have laughed by myself because I wouldn't have been talking to you. Um, you know, find people. So if you need someone to, if, you, if you're concerned about public speaking, go to that person. And again, it can be a man or it doesn't matter. And say, I need help with this very specific thing. Maybe someone else will help you with understanding marketing of, of whatever your project is, right? Again, because remember, you're a brand, and so marketing of yourself is really important. You can find different people to kind of plug in um, to different roles, and um, you know, almost back to your point about being authentic and being yourself. They, these are also people who can also help you keep honest. You know, what am I trying to achieve? What's my intention? Um, but it need not be one, in my opinion, it's great if you can find that one mentor or sponsor, which is another word that people use a lot. Um, but maybe you put together like a little think tank of people who work with you. And some people may drop off, other people may be added as you move through your, through your career. Don't, don't do this. I give you some, some advice of what not to do. Don't go to some woman and say, can you be my mentor? <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a big mistake. But, and, and don't limit it to women. Yeah. But, but what, what I think, and I, I'm, I, as I said, I think your mentor can be younger than you. Yes. It can be your age, it can be, just ask for advice, build a relationship with people that you trust, that you think. Uh, and by the way, mentorships have to be two ways. They have to get something out of you too. 
So they have to be learning how you think. So don't make it artificial. Make it a very organic thing and go and ask people for help. And by the way, when you are working with somebody and you think that what they're doing doesn't make sense, have the courage, again, in a good way, OK? <laughs> to be able to give the people feedback and say, you know, that person feedback, even if they're your boss, and say, you know, and, and that's one of the most valuable things there is, and say, you know, the way that you're thinking about this might have this kind of implication, or, you know, it might be, have you thought about doing it this way? And you start building two-way relationships that really become very valuable. Mm. I agree with all they say, is always we are prepared if somebody asks uh, to be to help or to be mentor or just be f feel free to ask but i am mentoring women since 2009 with vital voices i am not sure if all of you knows but vital voices global partnership um, and uh, it is in argentina since uh, 2009 and it is in united states maybe it's a good network and and they are very organized to to this kind of mentoring. And feel free to ask all the people to, t to take a, caf a coffee or just because we are prepared to help the others always. You can make me Facebook, LinkedIn, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> the question in the back. Sí, gracias. Primero, felicidades a Susan, que es la organizadora de este hermoso este evento. Felicidades a todas las speakers. Bueno, por otro lado, quisiera preguntarle a Cristina y Andrea, ¿cómo se inspiraron para, por ejemplo, Cristina, para hacer magníficos diseños que plasman las tradiciones y costumbres de México en tus hermosos este, textiles? Y ver cuánto tiempo les llevó en subir su negocio. Yo soy una pequeña empresaria aquí en Nueva York, tengo 13 años y bueno, no me debo quejar, gracias a Dios me ha ido muy bien. Muy bien. The question is Chris, to Christina and to Andrea, where you found the inspiration to yes. develop your business and how long it took you to grow it. Well, um, I think the most important is to talk about identity. And I think it's very special because when you have identity, when you have your own traditions, they, they give you enough uh, for Fuerza. Fuerza, strength. Strength to, to, to do everything. So you, you could, if you have in your mind and in your heart your legends, traditions, you could communicate them. So uh, we have been working since 20 years uh, doing this. And it's important because we, we promote all the, the traditions in, in, in an object. I mean, we, we print different designs who talks about, uh, for example, I, I, I love one design that I just make who talks about the peace in the world. So you could say many things in, in one object. Um, ¿Eso me preguntó? No? <laughs> <laughs> sí, ¿verdad? And well, I think it's the most important. Thank you. And congratulations to be here in New York because it's a big challenge. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I could add this, um, be passion, or maybe you are very passion because you are doing this. So passion, uh, I am thinking finance, um, and if you, if you could along, excellent. But if, when you couldn't along, look for partner. I, I could talk about my company now. When, when we, w we are from Argentina, but when we went go to Uruguay or Brazil or Colombia, we try to, to find good partner from the, the country because we understand that it's important they, they, they are, maybe they are the better to understand legal, uh, legal aspect or um, uh, talent, how the human resources are better. So, if you could do alone in another country, excellent. But if you couldn't, look for local partners that they know the culture, everything's no. 
and be passion, passion, passion to do, pasión por hacer. It's my book. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough time for two more questions. Okay, so. Okay. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a lottery. What is your question about, very quickly? My question? Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's, it's a pretty general question, but it's what do you see as the... Okay. No, no, wait. Uh, 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 oh, no, it's I about the, the future topic. of women. The future of women. Yeah. You back there. Corporate challenges. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, red. What we do wrong, back then, put in our mouth. Okay, back there. Women reinventing. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay. So we have topics of. Okay, so we're going to do a thingy, right? So we have topics of corporate challenges. We're talking about reinventing ourselves. We have what we would do differently. And you were the first one. You were. What are the future of women and leadership. Um, and okay, you know, uh. I, I just want to add um, what you would teach the younger generation, even younger than us, like girls that are coming from university, or even younger than university, going into university, how they would they would further their you know their careers as they continue. How us us you can empower those girls. Okay, so I'm going to start off with that one um, personally to just get it going. I think that the same thing you would tell a child is the same thing you can tell someone who's 60 or 70 or 80 or 90. It's the same process. It's always asking that question, what is my intention? What do I want? What does success look like? Right? What am I chasing? Um, whose timetable am I on? Right? Um, am I too old? Am I too young? Am I too this? You know, just what's motivating me? So I think the same thing that you would tell a younger person is the same thing you should tell yourself every minute, every morning when you look in the mirror. Okay, so corporate challenges. Let me just yep. ask yeah. one thing to, and then I can ask corporate, corporate challenges, maybe challenges. because I'm so involved. There's one thing that I would like to say before I leave. First of all, you know, a lot of young women in my country ask if it's you're able to do what you can, I mean, to, to coordinate your personal life, your career, and to have a family. And uh, I just wanted to make very clear, it is so, I mean, it's so possible, you know, as soon as you find a good partner that you can share your challenges and everything. And never give up about this, because at least for me, I know that there is some people that as an option, decide to not be a mother or to have children. But I think it's, it's such a good and unique experience for a woman that I would never, ever give up to do that. You can coordinate, you can do both, both things together, and it's really, really unique. And you, you were facing this experience, and a person I would like just to say this because I have heard that some women you know, decide to choose from one thing and, and the, then the other, and I don't think it's necessary. I'm just sorry to. And do you want to talk ab about the corporate issues? Yeah, but what are the corporate? Yeah, you know, uh, this, this thing about you have a leader and then maybe leader and mentor, maybe you can confuse a little bit the role of the two. Because when you have a leader, for sure, if you are open to receive feedback, if you change, like we have said here, you know, you can give feedback to your boss as well. You can say, yeah, I disagree. I think they value a lot when you say that, when you are transparent, when you think about yourself. So, but uh, having this relationship inside your corporate, is some, uh, inside your company, has your mentors, is part of your career inside a corporate. Because you need to be, uh, I mean, I have heard this, this is true, unfortunately, in a corporate uh, environment. You, you need to be uh, professional, you need to be efficient, you need to be capable, and you have to, you have to seem to be. So the, the people around you has to perceive the same thing of you. So you need to do connections, you know? Uh, despite you're gonna defend always what is right, what you believe, and have your arguments, you don't build a career inside any corporate without connection. So you need to do that. You, and you can do this your, uh, through your leadership. It's something that would help you because it will be someone that sponsor you inside your company. No, if I should address your question. I, I want to talk about quotas because today they were talking it. So I understand that we need a big impact. So I believe it's important to think in quotas not for women, the 40% by different gender. 
did you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, can I explain in Spanish? Mm -hmm. Because it's difficult, this. Yo creo que tiene que haber, por un tiempo, cuotas. Pero cuotas para el género, no para las mujeres. Entonces yo diría, debería haber en las compañías el, la cuota del 40%, por ejemplo, para hombres o mujeres. Tampoco es bueno que una compañía tenga todas mujeres. Entonces, le reservamos al hombre por lo menos el 40% para que se, se trabaje sobre la diversidad. Yo creo que eso creo que es algo que tenemos que pensar. Muchas veces tenemos el pudor, las mujeres, de decir no queremos cuotas, queremos llegar por nosotras mismas. Pero en definitiva, para que yo también tenía esta tensión que tenía hoy la persona de Financial Times en decir sí a las cuotas o no a las cuotas. Después de un tiempo creo que es necesario por un tiempo hasta que esto se, eh, se logre el impacto que queremos en las compañías. Creo que pienso en el 40% for gender, para el género. Y, y creo que las tres cosas que se pueden hacer en, y otra cosa que se puede hacer en las, en las corporaciones, ¿no? así como hay en la, la política llegan más, evidentemente porque hay cuotas, llegan más, este, más, más mujeres a a los consejos o a las presidencias y, y creo que también es importante las que las compañías están haciendo que es eh, dejarles más lugar trabajo flexible a las, a las mujeres y, eh, y también el tema de tener dentro de sus compañías lugares preparados para las mujeres pero but I could I try in, in English now Uh, but I believe that now the, the couples or the, women, the men enjoy more the, um, having in your house a person who grows. So this is important. The, I think the men are changing too, not only the women. They are changing, they are enjoying, enjoying m more when the women grow and provo provoke, provo mm. provoke them to grow too. So, um, I believe it's important thinking this kind of quotas or to the corporate, uh, corporate companies. Co companies. So quotas are important and also flexibility in terms of working hours, etc. Mel, you had something to say. I was going to say, if you're in a corporate environment where a lot of the leadership are men, I think it's important for us women to understand how men hear us. Let me give you a very specific example, okay? When, when I would have women and men that I was considering for a promotion and I had this big job, and let's say I, had, I was interviewing a woman and a man who had pretty much the same competence, same characteristics or whatever, and I would say to the woman, I really would like to consider you for this job. And she would say to me, well, you know, it's gonna be difficult, there's this issue, there's that issue, there's that other issue. And so to me, as a woman, I was thinking, this is pretty good. She knows what it's gonna take to get the job done. I would ask the guy, and he would say, I'm ready, I can do it, I'll have you there in six months. You know, I'm the right guy for the job. Now, as a woman, I was hearing, probably, he's way ahead of himself, okay? <laughs> Doesn't have enough humility to get the job done. But now think, if instead of a woman listening, it's a man listening, okay? And this has been said to me. And what the man hears is this. She doesn't have the self-confidence. She doesn't want the job. She doesn't think that she can get it done. So ladies, and I do think the future is ours, but we do have to understand how what we say, which is sort of the way we're socialized, and the way we communicate, how it's going to be heard. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to be aware of that in the corporate life. Otherwise, people will think that you don't have the self-confidence and you don't want the opportunity. Yes. And very quickly on reinvention, since yes. you're a big creative, particularly creative one amongst us, um, have you had to reinvent yourself over the course of your career? And, 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 and how, do you, how do you get started? If you have to think, I've been doing this, I'm now going to do this. How do you change course? Well, I think you have to have the, the all the time reinvent, reinventarse. You have to reinvent yourself all the time. All the time, yes. In love, in life, in everything. So but I, I think the most important is to have the capacity, the, the improvisation. Improvisation for us in Latin America, you know, it's 
obviously, because you mm -hmm. never, you never uh, find everything that you want. So you have to see how can you do for 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 do the things, no? I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say think we're going improvisar. to improvise. <laughs> we're going to wrap. I think a good question as we start thinking about going off to lunch and to our different tables is to think about, you know, for all of us here, what would we tell the younger, our younger selves? What would we tell ourselves 10 years ago or 15 years ago, even five years ago? And what would we tell ourselves today as we think about moving on to new careers or entering the workforce or simply just going back to our desks um, after such a great conversation with these women. I know that I'm inspired to kind of go back to Bloomberg and um, have a little bit more fun at work and maybe ask for something that I hadn't thought about asking for. Um, so thank you very, very much um, and we'll continue the conversation over lunch. Thank you.